Hey there, this is MathCamp321, and this is another installment of a video series on logarithms. This particular video is part two and discusses the three properties of logs. Just as there are rules of exponents, there are also rules for logs called properties. There are three log properties that you need to know. For this lesson, you're going to want to have your calculator handy as I'm going to convince you of these properties by looking at a few calculations. The first property that we're going to look at is called the product rule. This states that the log of a times b is equal to the log of a plus the log of b. In words, this would be read, the log of a product equals the sum of the log of each factor. So we're going to convince ourselves that this property actually works by using our calculator. So get your calculators out and the first thing that I'd like you to do is take note of where the log button is. If you're using a Texas Instrument model calculator, this button is right next to the number 7. So what I'd like you to do is type in log of 20. When you type in log of 20, you should get the decimal response of 1.301. Now 20 can be thought of as a variety of factors, and for convenience sake, I just picked 4 times 5. So now instead of log of a number, we have the log of a product, and that product is 4 times 5. And if we apply the product rule, we know that the log of 4 times 5 is going to be the log of 4 plus the log of 5. So what I'd like you to do next on your calculator is type in log of 4 plus log of 5. And hopefully we get the same result that we did when we typed in log 20. I've given you a few moments to try that and hopefully you realize that the results are in fact the same. If you add log of 4 plus log of 5, you still get 1.301. Let's take a look at a few questions. Part A. On Texas Instrument Model Calculators, the log button is next to what number? Well, the answer is 7. The 7 button is next to the log button. Part B. Use the product rule to expand the log of 12x base 2. So in example B, we're taking the log of a product, and that product consists of two factors, 12 and x. So the answer should be the log of 12 base 2 plus the log of x base 2. Let's take a look at example C. Use the product rule to expand the log of 9xy base 3. This time I'm multiplying three things together. There are three factors, 9, x, and y. So in my first step in expanding, I'm going to get the log of 9 base 3 plus the log of x base 3 plus the log of y base 3. Now if we look carefully, there are other opportunities, or there's one other opportunity to simplify a little further, and that's in the first term, the log of 9 base 3. This can be simplified further by performing a Schwing, which is something I discussed in the first video series on logs. If we do a Schwing, it would be interpreted in the following way. 3 to what power is equal to 9? And we know that 3 squared is equal to 9, so that first term really is just 2. So the final answer for C is 2 plus log x base 3 plus log y base 3. And for our final example of the product rule, we look at D. Use the product rule to expand the log of x times x plus 5. Again, we've got two things that we're multiplying. There's two factors, the x and the x plus 5. So this is going to turn into a sum. The log of x plus the log of x plus 5. Now in this example, there is no base given, which means there's an implied base of 10. This would be an example of what's called a common log. So the final answer will be log of x plus the log of x plus 5. So on this slide we learned the product rule and that is the log of a times b is equal to the log of a plus the log of b. Let's go to the next slide.
on this slide we're going to talk about our second property of logs and this is the quotient rule for logs it states that the log of a divided by b is equal to the log of a minus the log of b in words this would be the log of a quotient equals the difference of the log of the dividend and the log of the divisor let's convince ourselves that this property actually works by looking at a calculation let's consider the log of six six can be the quotient of a lot of different things i just arbitrarily picked eighteen divided by three by thinking of the number six as eighteen divided by three we now have the log of a quotient what i'd like you to do right now is get out your calculator and find the log of six if you do that you should get point seven seven eight if we apply the property for the quotient rule the log of 18 divided by 3 should be the log of 18 minus the log of 3 so now I'd like you to get your calculators out and do the log of 18 minus the log of 3 if all goes well it should also equal 0.778 I've given you a moment to do that and sure enough it does equal 0.778 so in doing that calculation, I hope you're convinced that the property actually works. Now let's try a few examples. A. Use the quotient rule to expand. The log of x over 6 base 3. Well, in part A, we're taking the log of a quotient, so we can express this as the difference of two logs. It would be the log of x base 3 minus the log of 6 base 3. Let's go to example B. Use the quotient rule to expand the log of w over 64 base 2. Again, we've got the log of a quotient, so this is going to turn into the log of w base 2 minus the log of 64 base 2. Now, this problem isn't entirely finished because if we scan the second term particularly, we see that there's an additional opportunity to simplify. If we do a schwing on this final term, and a schwing is something we talked about in our first video, it would be perceived in the following way. 2 raised to what power is 64? And the answer to that question is 6. 2 to the 6th power is 64. So that whole second term becomes the number 6. So our final answer is going to be log w base 2 minus 6. And for our final example, example C, use the quotient rule to expand the log of x plus 1 over x minus 1. So for the third time, we're taking the log of a quotient, which is going to turn into a difference of logs. The log of the numerator minus the log of the denominator. And again, just to emphasize, there's no base given in part C, so it is an implied base of 10, or this is a common log. So on this slide, we learned the quotient rule for logs, and that is the log of A over B is equal to the log of A minus the log of B. Let's go on to the next slide. On this slide, we're going to be talking about our third and final property of logs, which is known as the power rule for logs. Now, in my class, I've once nicknamed it the Power Ranger Rule, and the students really seem to respond well to that. So from this point on, we're going to refer to it as the Power Ranger Rule. And it says that if you're taking the log of something to a power, that that power can jump down in front of the log expression and become a coefficient. So the rule says log of a to the n is the same as n times the log of a. In words, the log of an expression raised to a power equals the power times the log of the expression. And again, we're going to convince ourselves with the use of a calculator. So as an example, I've made up log 49. And the reason I picked 49 is that it can be expressed as 7 squared, something to a power. So the log of 49 is equal to the log of 7 squared. Because we're taking the log of something to a power, in this case the power of 2, that 2 can leap down in front and become the coefficient to the expression log 7. So we end up getting 2 log 7. Now on your calculator, I'd like you to type in log 49. And I'd also like you to type in 2 log 7. 
and notice what you get. Okay, well, you hopefully observe that they are the same thing. Both of those expressions yield the decimal 1.69. Let's do a few examples putting that property into practice. A. Use the power rule to expand the log of x to the fifth base 3. So once again, we're taking the log of something that's being raised to a power, the power being 5. So this is going to turn into 5 log x base 3. In part B, it says use the power rule to expand the log of the square root of y base 5. What's interesting about this example is that there is not a clearly identifiable exponent as there was in A. In A, we saw that that power of 5 was just right there and ready to go. Here we don't have that. However, if we write the square root of y using fractional exponents, then we'll have that exact situation that we're looking for. So I'm going to rewrite the log of the square root of y base 5 as the log of y to the 1 half power base 5. In doing that, we have a clearly identifiable exponent. And when I use the power rule, that exponent can leap down in front and serve as the coefficient. So the answer is going to be 1 half log y base 5. And for our final example, example C, it says use the power rule to expand the log of 2x plus 3 to the power of 4. And in this case, it would be base 10 because there's no actual base number written there. We know it's an implied base of 10. So that power of 4 is going to leap down in front, and our final answer is going to be 4 log of 2x plus 3. So on this slide and the three before it, we discussed the three properties of logs, the product rule, the quotient rule, and the power ranger rule for logs. And on this particular slide, we learned that if you're taking the log of something raised to a power, log a to the n, that the answer is n log a. These properties will be particularly useful as we study different solving techniques in subsequent videos.